Okay, we're doing a new tape on called Pung Hinge. This is Laurel. Uh, Pung Hinge, okay. No use doing any training methods unless, as I always say, you know how to punch first. You can do all the training methods in the world, get in there, and if you can't hit anything, then forget it. You can't do anything if you can't hit anything. And so we get right back to our training on the mitts. And I keep saying that I did hours upon hours upon hours of this sort of training. Scientifically, what happens, of course, is a spark happens in your brain and your neuron transmitters transmit this signal through your nerves to activate the correct muscles. And the way that we get the punch like that, rather than like that, is that we learn to punch at exactly the same time that little spark happens in your brain. That's the difference between a reflex action and an action that's learned like punching that way. Totally muscular action. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, you've got to learn to get that that little spark happening even if you're just talking to someone it just happens because the sparks are happening all over your body all the time of course that's the way of nervous signals so you've got to get it like that even well, you know, a tenth the time of that that that's that's the time you've got to get your punching happening and it's very difficult at the beginning because people learn they learn to punch by looking at me, my, me or someone else and they learn to put their hand exactly there and do this and while you think about it of course you can't punch if you think about punching you can't punch it's got to be a totally reflex action with the precursor being that little spark that happens in your brain to, to make the thing happen. But if you think about it, you think about, oh, wait, where's that spark, where's that spark? It's gone, of course it's gone, you see. So you don't, and really, you can't really train in this. However, other than to just relax, and just to know when tch, that spark is going to happen. And I can't really show you how to do it. It's just a matter of knowing that that's the way it works, I think. I think that's the whole secret of it, is knowing that that's what happens. And if, what I always have in my brain is, when I, when I was learning this, was an actual a, a spark, like a lightning bolt. I used to imagine a lightning bolt in my brain. Bah! Firing. And at the exact time it fired, bah! That's, a bah! that's when you let your punch come out. I won't go over the physical actions of the punch because we've we've gone over that in great detail in many tapes. However, I will go. I'll tell a lie. I will go over it in, in smaller detail. It doesn't matter whether you've got your left or right foot forward. I have my left one foot forward there. Better, but if you start training with your right foot forward, that's the action of the hand. See, and it flicks at the end. So it's just these three knuckles making contact with the thing, not these two knuckles as in karate. We do use those knuckles but in punches like that for instance or back fists and things like that but not the, not the normal old straight punch even if it's a straight Wing Chun type of punch it still uses those three knuckles like that. However that snap punch, that neurological or the, the neuron transmitter punch as I like to call it now happens like that because that's the most natural action for the hand to do. This is forced that's forced, that is forced, you're holding your hand in an unnatural position unless you're punching down there of course and then it's in a natural position or down lower and then it's like that. That's the most natural position to hold your hand in. But if you punch like that of course you're not getting that snapping power, that whipping power like as in a whip even if you open your hand and close it. That, that's better as in Xing Yi but Xing Yi should never hold the fist and then punch that, you're getting back to karate then if you're going to do that. So it's always open and it just closes upon impact. You see, even if I'm doing it softly, there's a big difference between that and even if I just hold it like this and... See? I used much less energy than I did for that one and yet there's a far greater effect because I'm getting a whip on the end of it. If you just get a big whip and just 
that's the way they you know they pretend to be whipping people in circus circus <laughs>